Joining us on uh, this uh, Tuesday, Nick Barris here. We're streaming live on Facebook at newschannel5.com if you have questions or comments there. Along with uh, the plus here, you can call us with uh, Metro Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. And I was looking during the break through several of the comments. There are folks out there who say, look, I mean, we're kind of wedged into a corner here. We don't want to go to work, okay, because of the order and we want to stay home and be safe. We're even willing to bypass or use our vacation time or not get paid. But what if the boss says, if you don't show up, I'm going to fire you? I mean, they're in a pickle here and what's their choice? They don't want to lose their job. They want to stay safe. And as I say, some of them are willing to stay home maybe and not even get paid, but just abide by the mayor's orders. So what can legal do about this? So um, employers are supposed to be a part of this whole solution. Okay. So, you know, you follow the executive order, you do what you're supposed to do. You're just as, you know, involved in this as everybody else, I would say to employers. You know, use common sense. We have got to do this together. This cannot be, well, my business is more important, even though, you know, I'm not sure if it's essential or not. Let people work from home. Don't, uh, this is not the time to get into disputes with employees. We all got to figure out how to make this thing work together. Legally, we're still looking at it. So, Mayor's executive order, if you've got an employer who is really not in that gu those guidelines and is not considered one of those essential businesses that have to stay open, yet they're doing it anyway, we'll see. Mm -hmm. and we don't want to get to that point. And that's why we're saying, everybody, use your best judgment. Let, you know, if you don't need, if people can work from home, let them do that. This is yeah. really important for the next two weeks. The vice mayor is always diplomatic, but what I'm hearing is that, you know, if some employers are unreasonable, okay, um, then there's not the possibility, there's the possibility of le legal action when the time comes. And That's I would right. certainly take that into account. If an employer puts me in harm's way and forces me to do something and I get sick, they're going to get sued by me. It's going to happen. So employers got to use their noodle and be responsible. I understand they have a business to run, okay, that makes perfect sense. And, and we got to find a balance there, but it's got to yeah. be responsible. And, you know, as you've said, Metro Legal is looking at this to see if there's any recourse. Um, Metro Legal is looking yeah. at this. Let's go to uh, Buzz next. Buzz, good morning. Hi, Buzz. Hey, uh, how are y'all this morning? Good. good. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, uh, I know that uh, the big problem right now is the health of a lot of people, but also how about the health of Metro's fiscal problems that I hear so much about? I understand that we have a tight economy going on, and it's real critical right now. And I just got back from my local Kroger store. I have a handicap sticker, and every time I go there, there's three or four people sometimes parked in handicap mm -hmm. parking places that do so without regard for anyone else but themselves and driving very nice automobiles, but they they never get ticketed. I imagine that if you could give 25 <laughs> tickets a day, and I think you could at the one I go to, uh, you could raise a heck of a lot of money for Metro government. And if you take all of the parking uh, uh, areas of grocery stores in Asheville and do that, it would help tremendously for Metro's budget. And I just wondered what you would think about that. Thank you, sir, and I'm sorry that happens. The, but Jim, the same yeah. ones who are parking in those handicapped spaces without the proper placard are the ones buying up all the toilet paper and all these and stockpiling so others can't get it. They are simply selfish and thoughtless. Well, so I think Buzz makes a good point. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be doing that regardless of whether there's a, you know, the, the COVID-19, the coronavirus is going on or not. Um, we can certainly pass that along. Um, and we, look, I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the things that happens when things kind of slow up and shut down is that you have a chance to, if you can get to the initial stuff and figure out how we're dealing with this crisis, is it does allow people to start thinking through ideas about things that we should be doing better. Um, you know, I think I mentioned last time when I was on the show that, um, you know, when sometimes we, we go, God, I wish things would just slow down for just a minute so I can catch back up. Okay, so we're in a slowdown period. This is where we catch back up. So ideas like what Buzz is talking about are good things that we write down and then we pass along. We may not be able to deal with it right now, but um, we should deal with it. Yeah. Um, and I would also say that his initial point, which is economic situation, obviously um, mm. that's very, very difficult. Um, Metro was already in a tight budget going in. We can talk more about that later, but um, yeah. yeah, we knew it was going to be a tight budget year, and now we've got an economic situation that is not 
good at all. Well, and that's exactly right. And that comes next. Right now, the focus, right. as we've been talking about, is dealing with this. But we all know that when this finally does pass and this virus dies down and goes away, we're going to have months and months and months of catching back up to where we were. Okay. Right. But those who are concerned about economics right now aside from the basics and a lot of what I hear is basics and that's important but the big picture of economics right now that has to take a back seat we have no choice it has to take a back seat yeah, to you, dealing you with this pandemic the, you got to protect the public first exactly so right. just make sure you get your priorities straight folks okay that's let's right. live first and then let's worry about how we're gonna pay for things all right let's go next to uh, mr. Bowen mr. Bowen good morning good morning sir what's on your mind I have a citation that I got from uh, Lebanon, Tennessee, but I live in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And the um, expiration, so for it's paying the ticket without it, uh, without me going into a suspension, a license suspension, was up last uh -huh. Friday. Uh -huh. Now with the uh, distancing that we have going on, uh, what about the Music City Star? Because I don't have transportation. Is that still rolling? Okay. So I think all uh, you should go to um, go to the the website for Music City Star or call them and make sure they're still functioning. I believe that most of the public transportation is still functioning like it's supposed to, but they're taking obviously very very strict precautions. Um, there were a number of council members that sent messages over I think the weekend to make sure that WeGo was still doing what they were supposed to in terms of protecting their employees and protecting the riders mm -hmm. and believe they're doing everything that they're supposed to do. I'll tell you but, what, I, I suspect that, don't you think a lot of people, he was mentioning the tickets, yeah. uh, Jim, about paying traffic tickets. I know people want to do it. I was at the courthouse the other day here, the Birch Building, and there was some fellow that had to pay something. The door was locked there right. to the clerk's office. He had to slide the paperwork under the door, and they slid it back to him. And there was another fellow that couldn't get through. I don't know about you, but if I have a traffic ticket, and I don't right now, I have every intention to pay it. But I'm not stressing out about it right now. I wouldn't stress out about it yeah. if it's in it's in Wilson County. Obviously, I think you you probably should make a phone call before you would ever think about going all the way to Wilson County to pay because they may not be open. Call them first, you know, see if they're open. Uh, they should have if they're not open, they should have left a message. I, I at this point, I'm not really sure if they're that concerned about these tickets. Uh, obviously, I don't want you to have a late fee. Mm -hmm. um, but just call them. I think people are being hopefully very understanding at this point, but I would really encourage you not to take a train from Davidson County over to Wilson County because they may not be open. Call and, and see what you should do. That's the best thing. You disappeared behind a graphic there for a moment. Oh, but I now did. You're back up. Yeah, we got you. Probably Somebody, better. People, probably now, better people shot want to see me. you. People want to see you. Um, <laughs> hey, keep in mind, yes, I, I can't imagine that when this is through, if you weren't able to pay a ticket or something, any late fees are likely going to be forgiven. We've already seen at the federal level now, we all know we don't have to pay our taxes until July 15th. It's been pushed back, okay? And that's the way it plays out because of everything else that's going on. So everything's postponed. Don't stress about those little things. The main thing is take care of yourself. Okay. Let's go next to Anne. Anne, good morning. What's on your mind, Good Anne? morning. Good um, morning. Three things, and I'll be real quick. Okay. First, to let the vice mayor know that the East Precinct is doing everything they can do. They're awesome. Sergeant Fisher has been proactive at letting all of us on this <clears throat> side of town be aware of what to expect in the weeks to come, especially if stimulus money starts flying into the mailboxes. And I just want him to know that the East Precinct is doing everything Good. that they can do in this time right now. We'll pass that along. Secondly, yeah. um, what is the council doing to assist our Board of Education because our schools have been crippled on top of low test scores and everything else. We now have had a tornado and we have the COVID. And lastly, with businesses, my husband's business is dependent on machine shops all over the country. What is here in Davidson County is just one small component. Okay. okay. Well, just just scoot through a few of those real quick sure. for us. So I'll would. pass along the stuff about the East Precinct. Yeah. Great. Sergeant Fisher, great. 
Uh, I'll pass it along to Chief Anderson. By the way, with regard to that, did we not see also yesterday that uh, one of the first cases of coronavirus involving a Metro police officer? That's right. Yeah, that's and right. so and that's that's the scary thing, and it doesn't look as though it's spread throughout. But that's one thing I thought about. Gosh, forbid! And they're working the front lines, the officers, the fire department, and all this. What if it were to spread through the entire police department? Which there's no indication that's the case. But that's why they have to be protected. They have Those to be are protected. very essential employees. That's right. Yeah. So I will say that. I mean, so when I was walking in here today, I was trying to remember. Um, it was three weeks ago that we had the tornado. It was March the third. Today is what March the twenty fourth. Yep. Three weeks ago, it seems like it was three years ago, not three weeks ago, that this happens. Can you imagine what's happened between the tornado and today? Crazy. It's just amazing. Crazy. Um, okay, so the council working with the board of education, with the school board. So we had a lot of plans in place. You know, trying to figure out how to get more money for teacher pay, how to get take care of school supplies, other things like that. Everything has kind of obviously been put back on hold. Um, I think the, what the school system is doing in terms of trying to put together and feed kids while this is going on and just dealing with it, they're trying to deal with their situations while the mayor is trying to deal with his stuff and the council is trying to figure out what it needs to do at the same time. But you can always rely on your individual council members if you have a particular problem. Uh, you know, we're still functioning. We're still doing what we're supposed to do. But good point on the teacher stuff. On the um, machinery stuff, um, particularly if it goes across state lines, that's more of a national issue. These things have to continue to function. Um, it depends, you know, again, essential, non-essential. Every state is trying to figure out how to do this. Um, the, what I can say is that, again, you can almost feel a sense of innovation going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been going on here for the last, you know, week in terms of restaurants realizing that they were gonna have to shut down for dining purposes. So they're switching over very quickly to, you know, take out delivery. Same thing's gonna happen with the national model as well in terms of manufacturing. You're seeing companies, big companies, switch over. They realize that they were it's more important not to make so many cars, but to make ventilators. So the great thing about this country has always been its innovation. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it go on right now, just hold on. Yep. Um, and you're gonna see it. I, I think you're gonna see us you know, again, if we if we do what we're supposed to do now, hopefully we'll get out on the other side very quickly. And as Nick said, uh, you know, it's like taking an exam in school. You're sitting there going, what do I want to do when I finish studying and I'm so tired of this? What do I want to do on the other side? Let's hope that other side is a lot quicker. Exactly. And, but we need to do what we need to do right now. Let's take another phone call. We'll go to uh, Rachel. Rachel, good morning. Hi, Rachel. Hi, how are you? Good. What's hey, on Rachel. your mind? Um, so my brother lives with my elderly mother who has um, COPD and several other health conditions mm -hmm. and he is trying to take every precaution uh, necessary to make it to where she does not pick this up and possibly, you know, get the coronavirus. And he works at a little food place in a gas station down the road mm -hmm. from their house so it's close to her if she has a medical issue he can get to her. Well, he bought a N95 mask mm -hmm. and wore it to work, and they told him that he could not wear it. And he said, I am here willing to work. I am not, you know, I, I, I don't want to lose my job. And they refused to let him work. And they talked to the general manager about it, and they once again told him he could not wear the mask that he purchased to protect himself and help protect my mother. And they fired him yesterday for insubordination. Do you do you imagine? And I was wondering. Do you, do, I'm just curious. Uh, do you know why they told him he couldn't wear it? Were they afraid that customers would see it and think he was sick? That's what we were thinking. Okay, I'm just guessing. Okay, go on. I'm sorry for interrupting. What were you going to ask? It's okay. I was wondering, you know, if there, if you guys have any advice that we can move forward with this. Um, okay. I mean, he helps pay the bills and take care of my mom, so. Okay, let's, let's hit that. Um, that's an interesting one, Jim. I mean, he's trying to protect himself. I understand maybe from the point of view of the employer, though I don't sympathize with what he did there. I think that was wrong. But um, I, yeah, I don't you, you see someone behind. If you're a customer, you walk in, you see someone with a mask. I'd, I don't know that I'd make a flat-out assumption, would you? I, I would think, one, either that person's trying to be protective. I would not assume he's sick, because I'm thinking, if that person is sick, that employer is not going to let him work behind there. Now, that's if you trust that, I suppose. You, what do you think about cases like this? He was trying to be proactive. Had one of the good masks. I want to know how he got that. That's great. But, I mean, is, what about that? So I'm, I'm going through a lot of things in my mind trying to figure out. So that's exactly what, 
we really don't want to happen. I mean, the individual showed up for work, uh, taking care of a um, sick older person that is at risk, particularly with COPD. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is, again, this is where this is where the country has to pull together. Well, what this would be rational in this point? I mean, as a business owner, I mean, you're right. There, I don't know what we can tell her, but what, what's, what should have been the rational move here? Um, you know, I, I don't know there's any good outcome. It, it, either he wears the mask or he doesn't work, then he can't make money, okay? The employer sees him wearing the mask and says, this is going to scare away customers and that'll shut us down. So I don't know what you do. That is a tr that's just a hard thing. And there's a lot of scenarios like that going on out there right now. Um, I mean, I'm really, yeah. this one is, has got me. I'm not sure what to tell you to do. Um, it sounds like everybody was doing what they were supposed to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the people who can be most impacted by this, at least, you know, generally are older people. Uh, who have and on people who have uh, underlying health conditions but particularly older people and if he's taking care of an older person and he wants to take precautions himself i don't know what the problem is i mean he you yeah. know uh, if you walk around even if you drive around or if you watch the news you see people with masks sure on. you do um i i don't know i'm i'm willing to help you can certainly send me a, an email at, at jim.shulman at nashville.gov s-h-u-l-m-a-n I feel really bad about the situation. I don't know if there's anything that I can do, but I'm certainly willing to try to help. Um, we need yeah. people working. We need people with these convenience stores open. That's one of those things that's an essential service. Yeah, my take um, is, yeah, Jim, logic would dictate in cases like this, if I see someone with a mask out and about, I am not assuming that they are sick, okay? No, Maybe I, they I are, but yes. I am assuming they're trying to protect themselves. And we've been told also, by the way, that masks are really there for the, you know, the health care workers first and foremost, but that they're, they're really there for people that are already in bed to protect the health care workers who have to lean over them and treat them. Right. But, I mean, most people that have full-blown coronavirus are not out walking around buying a sandwich in a grocery store no. so, or making sandwiches back there. So if they're wearing a mask, I assume they're wearing them to protect themselves and me. So I, I think them bringing the hammer down on him like that was wrong. I well, just think that was wrong. So the new normal right now is, you know, you go places, you go to the grocery store, and people are wearing masks. Yeah. I don't think they're sick. They're, they wouldn't be out if they're sick. If they're sick and they've got this, right. they're, they're, gonna be in bed. they're at home. They're going to be in bed. Um, yeah. So All right. I, I, yeah, common sense, like Jim said, <laughs> it's got to be common sense, right? Logic. Yeah, I feel really bad about about that one. Yeah, that's and a tough one. I appreciate her call because I guarantee you she's not the only one coming across that scenario. Look, we have to take a quick break. When we do uh, come back, we'll continue with more comments on Facebook. We're live at newschannel5.com and callers there will be with you for the next 10 minutes. Stay with us.